Hi, I'm Shelley Letwim, and this is our part eight in our matrix setting series. Now, today we're going to talk about halos, and there is no particular halo setting like channel setting or prong setting, but I've got here two examples of halos. Since halos are so popular now, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Matrix Halo Builder. Now, you can see here on the right, this is the type of halo I try to build all the time with prongs. Over here, this is your micro prong set halo. And again, on another video, I really stress how the stones have a greater chance of falling out with this type of setting than prong set. Also, I think the render, because I'm all about making pretty pictures, I think the render looks nicer on this image versus this one. I'll cover micro prong set in a future video. So I just wanted to bring this out to show you the difference in the setting. This one, again, your stones have a better shot of staying in. The setter will have an easier time of setting this than this version. But again, this is very, very, very popular. But the stones can fall out faster than in this one. When someone's spending a lot of money on a piece of jewelry, you want it to last. Anyways, let's just select this and delete it. Okay. So we're back to this version here. So with Matrix Halo Builder, for the price of Matrix, you will get everything that you see here. You'll get the base, and you'll get the prongs, and you get the stones. That's really cool. Halo Builder, you do have the option of changing out the outside shape very easily. So that instead of having a round halo, we've got our cushion shape. The other thing that I like very much about Halo Builder is that because these stones are set on a radius here, that these prongs are actually larger on the outside because there is a greater gap here than there is here when you're on a curve. I really like this feature. With Halo Builder, this is the only builder that you're actually going to see this feature where the inside prong diameter is smaller than the outside prong diameter. So I really like that look. Some customers don't. The other thing, too, about Halo Builder, let's hide the gemstones for a second and hide the prongs. It does come along here and make this groove for you. So it's basically eliminating a lot of metal. I one time had a customer who was not a setter, unhappy, made me fill this in and drill holes. That was just one. But for everyone else, they get this channel. And again, with Halo Builder, you can change that out. So what are my prong height and my prong diameter? Well, I pretty much keep the default with matrix. So whatever stone size the customer wants, I always try to make it an even amount of stones. And so again, depending on how tight and how close the customer wants the stones, I'm just sticking with the default for the diameter and the height. So far, so good. Now on here, I've got these beads set, so I was able to use prong builder on here, and my diameter on these prongs are 0.7 because they're shared prong, and the height, if I go back to edit prongs, my height is again 0.5. All right, even though it's not in a channel, I haven't had any pushback on that. So these stones, if we go into gems and gem reporter, so my small stones are 1.4 millimeter. And what did I make this band? Let's just go to wireframe. And again, if I go to measure, horizontal dimension, and find an O snap. 
And again, I have project turned on, so I'm looking for O snap. So I'm two millimeters. So technically, I'm giving about 0.3 millimeters on either side. Now, the other thing that I am often done is if I select these stones, tap F6, I will kind of do sort of a fake micro prong set. And fake, what do I mean by that? I'll click on micro prong cutter. Micro prong cutter does default into what they call the standard mode. So I have this shape selected. And it's part of the library. So if we go into style sheets, it's in the library of style sheets. So again, if you want to save some time, you can set up your cutters and have them in this library so that you can pick and choose at any time. So if I select that and hit apply, and I actually want these a little bit lower down. So Boolean's turned on. Let's click on the word surface. Let's click on our ring. And there you go. So this is actually way too deep. So we'll adjust our height. And where's our drop? I'll pull that up. And here's our width. And we'll just... So it's a little bit of walking back and forth. But... That's kind of a fake micro prong setting where you get the scoop. Okay, and if we click on here, there's, again, all kinds of different shapes. Here is channel 07. If you kind of want a cleaner look, you can select that one. And looks like it hasn't updated itself yet. Let's just move a handle for the boolean to catch up so there we go okay so that's how i kind of cheat and sort of give them a fake micro prong set by just doing this one cut right underneath the gemstone so we've got a nice little scallop there this gets polished off a bit so in my intermediate class, I do show you how you can use the top of this prong and the base of this cut and sort of blend them. No, I don't use blend. <laughs> but sort of blend these together so that you have a nice transition. It looks super cool, but it's a lot of work to do one quarter and then you just mirror over to the other side and then mirror over there but it does take a lot of work to have this blend in nicely is it worth it only your customer is going to be the one to tell you whether it was worth taking that time to do that halo builder again is very popular and if we go into gems here is the button for halo builder and I'm just going to click on it just to show you the menu. So you'll notice that I like to use the viewport handles a lot when I'm building. I, I rarely come over to this menu here to use a tool unless I can't get to it by using a handle. And when you're using Halo Builder, there's a handle for all these buttons until right here. And then these are mostly dealing with the prongs. And so if you want to go in and adjust your prong, the height, the location, the nudge, you'll have to come over to the menu here to make any changes because you will not find a handle, a viewport handle over here in Halo Builder. So that's all I wanted to talk about with Halo Builder. It's easy peasy to build a Halo with Halo Builder. That's the whole reason why GemVision came out with Halo Builder. So this was another short video. And again, I like Halo Builder a lot, mostly because of this feature here where you've got the outside diameter larger than the inside diameter. Now, before 
Jam Vision actually came out with Halo Builder, you could run this. What we were doing was running prong builder with the small prongs, getting them set up, ungrouping, deleting the outside prongs, putting the inside prongs on a different color and hiding them, and then running prong builder again to get the outside, the diameter that you need, then ungrouping the inside prongs, throwing them away, and then bringing back those ones that you've saved to get that same look. I kind of have a feeling that that's what Matrix does on the fly behind the curtain. And perhaps maybe it's not, but that's how I was doing it until they actually came out with this head builder in Matrix. So you can see why I'm such a big fan of it. Okay, so that's part eight of our Matrix setting series. I hope there were some tips and tricks that you picked up on this. So again, as I'm saying on every video, these are guidelines that I've developed over the last 20 years, talking to other CAD operators, learning from GemVision classes, getting feedback from setters and casters and jewelers. If your setter does not like any of these numbers that I'm giving you, please listen to them. They're the ones that are ultimately going to finish your piece and make it beautiful with the stone securely set. So I thank you for sitting in and watching part eight, and I hope you're going to stick around for part nine. Thanks for watching.